Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 12th episode of the Fans of DC Universe podcast, the only DCU podcast for the fans, by the fans, and the best source for all DC Universe news and a discussion on everything DCU. Today, we are discussing House of Whispers' Vanishing Act, Titans Episode 3, Ghost, and Community 2.0. But first, joining us today is Aquaman C137, Duke CT45. Dude, Hello. We're five. Me, Nathan Up Payson, and New Fifty Two. Hi. Uh, this week, uh, we have brand new comics semi DCU, including The Immortal Man number six, Wild Storm Michael Cray number eleven, Catwoman number three, Detective Comics number nine eight eight, Flash The Flash number fifty four, Hawkman number four, Plastic Man number four, Red Hood and the Outlaws number twenty six, Sideways number eight, Suicide Squad number forty six. Supergirl number 22, Superman number 3, Titans number 25, Wonder Woman number 54, and newly digitized Batman the Road Home, Rajah Ghoul number 1, Deadman number 1, Detective Comics number 325, Doom Patrol number 17, Our Man number 22, House of Mysteries number 179, uh, House of Secrets number 110, Nathaniel Dusk number 1, Superman number 3. Uh, so, what did you read this week? Well, um, I've been um, reading, actually, The Immortal Men, and it's interesting. And it's something that is, it's really weird to see that, you know, this stuff happening in the in this uh, DC universe and such. Um, one of the issues that I don't like, it seems like it's a cliche at this point, in the previous comics, he, they killed his uh, the main uh, characters, like oh, the kids' characters' parents. I'm like, I wish they could have kept him alive or just hurt or something. Which I don't know. It just it feels like, you know, it's just like it's just a, um, it's cheap. It's it's that to me. It's just it feels cheap. And what do you read? What do you read? The Immortal Man. Uh, oh, got it. Now I'm looking at the Immortal Man six. Um, you know, seeing how. You know, all the world and everything else is set up, and this is connected to, uh, I believe, DC Metal, and I do like that type of connection. Yeah, sort of. And, I mean, well, it, yeah. it's confusing. Immortal Men is uh, part of the New Age of Heroes line, which is a spinoff of New Age of Here of the Dark Knight's Metal, but only one of the titles is still around, despite them all supposedly being ongoings. Uh, fun yeah. fact, uh, it's it's because most of them weren't that good. Immortal Men number six is, is the final issue of the Immortal Men series. Yeah, it is. And to me, and there is some, you know, like I said, there was interesting stuff here, but I can see why that the Immortal Men did not last long. It just seems like the monsters, while, um, you know, while interesting, seemed a bit generic and it's connected to a DC event um, that sadly, you know, some people liked, some people didn't like. And, and I think people just, I think it's it was connected to an event while people were event fatigue and they're like, uh, another thing here. And they just didn't, they probably did not like the fact that this was just another, uh, just uh, connected to an event and the new age of heroes. And it's a shame that it did because I think there was some good stuff in it, but I can see why um, they, they just didn't really uh, catch on with new readers and, um, not just new readers, but people in the DCU. So, but I, hopefully, with this new life on DC Universe, people might pick it up and maybe they'll see. Maybe it can have a second life or something. You know, who knows? Yeah. So, anyone who follows me on DC Universe and like looks at my post uh, knows that my DC poll list this week was basically every single comic. Uh, so oh. I could talk about all of them. But I figured I'd score. I give give all of them a score out of five that I read, and I'm just gonna say the score, and then maybe and then if you guys have questions about it, we can uh, talk. I can get, explain why. So Catwoman number three is a four. Detective Comics number nine eight eight is a two. Flash number fifty four is a three. Hawkman number four is a four. Plastic Man number four is a two. Uh, Sink it, Suicide Squad number forty six is a three. Supergirl number twenty two is a three. Supergirl number Superman number three is a two. Titans number 25 is a three. And my favorite comic of the week was Red Hood and the Outlaws number 26. Hmm. That's well, a lot of reading, man. Yeah, that's, that's a nice uh, <laughs> reading. It was good. This is why I love DCU, because I can just read everything. 
Uh, oh, yeah. but, the, but the reason why I like Red Hood Outlaws, and honestly, all of you guys should go read it. It's it's the start of a new sort of run. It's not necessarily the start of the run, but it's the best like starting point because they're like they're basically changing the entire title. And one of the ways they're changing the the title is they're starting over the trade bag series at a volume one. So like if I'm looking for the book, it's like oh volume one, and you grab it, and it's Requiem for a Requiem for an Archer. Which I think that's what it's called, which is Red Hood and the Outlaws, but it's Red Hood Outlaw. So basically, because of the new change, uh, it's going to be a really it's a new direction. Uh, Jason Todd basically has left the Outlaws. He's left Gotham, and now he's kind of on his own. And man, there's some like really good set pieces, and I really think you guys would love it. Hmm. I think I will. Um, I will check it out when I get the chance to. Yeah, and you, one thing that's nice is you don't need much. You don't need any prior continuity. Literally, what I told you, Jason Todd left Gotham, and left Batman, and left the Outlaws, and abandoned them, and so on his own. That's all you need to know to jump in. Mm. <laughs> okay, he's yeah, he's definitely a cool character for sure. Um, before I talk about things I've read this week or whatever, uh, I'd like to touch base on what Duke was saying. Yeah, I totally agree about the. Uh, using like the dead parent scenario like i get that it makes for a good like uh traumatic experience to build a character on but it's it's definitely just been done a bunch and uh, you know dare i say kind of just kind of lazy writing and uh also about like the fatigue about uh you know event things with like comics and having to follow a bunch of different other uh titles like yeah i wish they would uh, get back more to just i know there are some but just more focused on single you know stories and uh, yeah, for things yeah. I read this week, um, I uh, so a part of the Vroom's book club, the Superman book club, the uh, World of Superman on the DCU app. I uh, did what was it? Um, Lightning uh, Strikes Twice as uh, a Superman Shazam team up, uh, really good. I love Shazam, and uh, sometimes he kind of competes with my uh, love for Superman because he is such a great character. Like, I know people say, like, uh, it's hard to invent a new character, but Shazam kind of proves that, like, you, you don't really have to, like, you know, revamp him too much. Like, even if he has, like, the same powers as an existing character, if he's done right, man, people will like him. Um, and just the art by uh, Ian, yeah. oh, sh shucks, I can't remember his name, but really good. It reminds me a lot of Jim Lee's artwork. Uh, Ian uh, Chappell, I think it is, um, or Churchill, like, uh, really good. And uh, yeah. besides besides that, I don't know if you guys have read. I know it's it's not on the app, and I don't think it will be because it's still like a great seller and fairly new. But um, the uh, the Batman like the White Knight, I just got that uh graphic novel, or whatever. Oh my goodness! Like hands mm -hmm. down, my my favorite Joker story ever. Like so Whoa, intriguing. And what that's, that's a statement, man. That's a lot. Dude, Dude, I'm telling you, like, and I was a huge fan of, like, uh, Snyder's Batman run with, like, you know, with the Court of Owls and all that stuff. And, like, yeah. you know, a lot of the older stuff from the 80s and 90s. And, um, man, just wow, dude. Like, if that was a movie, I mean, that is a Batman story done right. Like, oh, my um, goodness. What is this, uh, again, the story, you know? It is um, uh, Batman White Knight by Sean Murray. And, like, oh, so, without really doing any spoilers, it, like, starts off with uh, Joker giving this, like, phenomenal speech in court about how, like, Gotham elites pretty much turned him into Joker. And, like, they use, like, the uh, judicial system as, like, a way for them to, like, keep, stay in power and how they have this, like, secret fund um, that like all the damage that Batman causes, like, you know, it goes, you know, there's like a fund for it, you know, like taxes and it, it like kind of goes to them and they benefit from uh, rebuilding. Like, you know, how like, you know, like uh, Rockefeller stuff like that will push like people of low income out of their neighborhood so they can like, you know, build new infrastructure, stuff like that kind of situation. But it, it, it pretty much, it starts off with like Joker uh, after getting, he, before he gets out of uh, incarceration, he like escapes and take and like goes to some warehouse and uh, gets a hold of medicine that actually makes him sane. And just imagine like way better than a joke, the Joker who laughs, like a Joker with that kind of cunning, but it, with sanity. And how he like uh, yeah, I think the easy way to put it. 
Yeah, I think the easy way to put it is uh, Joker becomes good and becomes the hero, and Batman becomes the villain. And well, eventually, it's yeah. That, I mean, yeah, of... that's a, definitely a, a, like a, a good simplification of the story. Like, but uh, yeah, it is just phenomenal. Like, it's it's one of the best written Batman stories I've ever read. Uh, New Fifty Two. Uh, what were you reading this week? Um, so out of that list, I've actually been reading Wonder Woman Fifty Four. Um, it's about the Banamig doll, the Amazons that separated themselves from Themyscira and they're like trying to invade a nation of Karak, which I didn't know about Karak that much. I've only heard of the Karaki situations from like Young Justice. Um, yeah. But it's pretty interesting. Steve Orlando's writing it just um, in the meantime before G. Willow Wilson comes on. They had Steve Orlando doing these issues and then James Tynan comes in to do The Witching Hour. And it's been pretty, it's been Okay. Yeah, that's what I heard. I really okay. like the the first issue of the force, so number fifty one, but I I like didn't read fifty three or four because I thought fifty two wasn't that enjoyable. Yeah, but the art was great for me. Oh, it the is. art was really cool. It was the inverse pyramid or whatever. Yeah, by but, um, because ACO always does like these cool layouts of all of the panels. Yeah, like like the comic like art was great. I just didn't like the story at all. Yeah, and the thing is in 54 the artist changes. So Oh, I get it. Yeah. I'm sorry. But that's been <laughs> that's been great though. Um what I have been reading that has amazing art is Batman Superman Wonder Woman Trinity, which is um, so written I, uh... and drawn by Matt Wagner. Oh uh, yeah, I heard um, that. That was good. That was a good story. Is this yeah. Trinity? Is this is this Trinity from Rebirth? No, no, no. This one's right. from 2003. Got so it. it's about like when they first meet. Uh, yeah. That sounds a lot more interesting. I didn't like the Rebirth Trinity at all. And uh, <gasps> no. I know it was oh. kind of a mess. And it like never decided like what family and Rebirth it wanted to be. And so trying to like write a reading order, it's like impossible to place. Because, like, one issue, it's, like, one volume, it's very focused on, like, Red Hood and the Outlaws and, like, a Batman sort of story. And then the next one, it's this, uh, it's focused on, like, a Superman story. And oh. the next one, it's Wonder Woman. And so it's, and, like, never felt like there was a cohesive story. See, I never got to the Rebirth version, so I'm bummed to hear that. But um, also, yeah. since you mentioned Red Hood and the Outlaws... There was the Dark Trinity or whatever in that, right? Where it was Red Hood and Artemis and then Bizarro. Yeah. Well, in this Trinity from 2003, you have Artemis and Bizarro with Ra's al Ghul. Interesting. Really? Those sound cool. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Wow. That's and a I unique actually, take. Yeah, I actually feel that fits more than Red Hood. Like, Rachel Ghoul fits more as, like, Batman's opposite. Oh, yeah. definitely. I do think Red Hood is the reason you should read Red Hood and the Outlaws, though. Right? Like, like it's not a dark Trinity story. It's really a Red Hood story and about how Red Hood can still be a good person, even with his, like, darker take, you know? Whereas, like, Dark Trinity, right, is really about, like, an evil anti-Justice League. And so all of a sudden it's harder to make the story compelling. Whereas Ra's al Ghul is just such an easy, you're the bad guy, one and done, right? If that makes sense. Yeah. Like Red Hood has too much to nuance. Yeah. Red yeah, Hood has a... too much nuance to fight Batman and yeah. Wonder Woman and Superman. But uh, uh, one other comic I like this week, I'm just going to highlight this, is Hawkman number four. So everyone's falling in love with Hawkman uh, right now because uh, the Ven the Vendetti, I think, is writing it, and uh, and it's really fun. Uh, the first, I'm just at this point. It's been three issues. Can I just spoil the big reveal at the beginning? They'll make you want to read the series. Spoil away. Okay, so Hawkman number one opens up with the idea that Hawkman who's, you as we know, has always been reincarnating throughout time, right? He was Hawkman in Egypt, and now he just reincarnates and alongside Chiera. But uh, the issue reveals that Hawkman doesn't just 
uh, reincarnate throughout time, he reincarnates throughout space. So there's like a Hawkman of Krypton and a Hawkman, and that's why we have Hawkman of Thanagar. And we have all these other Hawkmans from across like the world and space and time. And uh, I thought, and it's like, open my jaw and like the re the first like arc is about him learning who he is and like trying to figure out like the truth behind his past now is that applicable to all of the hawk people or just hawkman specifically uh to hawkman and shiera i, I think i want to say it's all of them and that all the female hawk people are female are all reincarnations of shiera throughout time and space and uh, all the hawk men are Carter, but I don't think that I don't know if that's true. But and they have I, like a whole planet in Thanagar, right? Yeah, but it's but what's weird is in Thanagar, they don't like most of the Thanagarians, at least in this run, don't have wings, they have like mech suits, which are look like wings, whereas mm -hmm. like Hawkman has an actual pair of wings, if that makes sense. Oh, like originally, I want to say you know, Hawkman's wings were just like uh you know like a harness thing that he put on like carter mm -hmm. hall like way back yeah. I, I don't i don't know if maybe they're going with that but if they did go with that that wouldn't make sense that he would have the wings well then what makes what i think it is is i'm not certain i'm guessing right now is that carter has wings because he's the hawkman and the reason why thanagar is like the hawk people is their uh like army or whatever is that they're not actually they don't actually have wings they have mech suits and they're inspired by the first Hawkman of Thanagar, who created the whole planet, and like that idea, that, like we're the Hawk people, you know, who identify with the first Hawkman on the planet. And what what comic is this, man? Uh, this is Hawkman. Uh, oh, the new, uh, the new one that's running right now. Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah, I've only read like the first two. I definitely like the art in that, but that's interesting. I definitely need to keep reading that one. Yeah, I really liked um, how Hawkman's whole story was dealt with in the animated series of Justice League because it just made yeah. more sense to me like he's a hawk person from Thanagar who landed on Earth and then from there started being reincarnated because of like Egyptian stuff. It's the story See? I like the most. <laughs> that still sounds confusing to me but the whole idea <laughs> is that he's trying to like re-simplify the continuity if that makes sense and uh and I really like it. Hmm. I'm digging it. Although I did start falling asleep while reading number four, but that's because I was reading it at midnight <laughs> on a school day. It's well, you read a lot this bad. week. You did I read know, a right? lot. I just sat down at like 10 and I just start going one at, th one at a time through them. I also read, and this is why I'm like so shocked, because I read Batman uh, Huntress, uh, Cry for Blood. It's okay, but the <laughs> ending is fantastic. Like I can't stop thinking about the ending. Mm -hmm. Like the last like page is like really 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 well written. Then sorry, I got to interject with something. Yeah. I misspoke like yeah. I misspoke like super bad, and I have to correct it. Um, so okay. I said lightning strikes twice for the Shazam Superman thing, which as I was saying, I was like, wait a second, that's like Rebirth, uh, Volume One or Two or something like that with the Flash. That's Flash. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, like yeah. So it was um it was actually like a. Uh, the Eclipso arc from like the early 2000s run between Action Comics Adventures, Superman, Superman, and then the the one that had Thunder in the title was the Superman Shazam first Thunder. Just had to correct. That. I was I was gonna say that, but there are other uh, series which have an arc titled Lightning Strikes Twice. So it's yeah, quite possible. You. It's quite possible that you were all right, and that you're like now you're like telling yourself you're wrong. Because you like know it's like an arc from Rebirth, right? Oh no, I was I was super wrong. Like after I said it, I was oh. like, that doesn't, that doesn't sound right. So I jumped on the DCU thing and looked at uh, Vroom's uh, book club, and I was like, yep, you you uh, you crashed and burned <laughs> on that one. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where because I remember the like reading something recently. It was like Lightning Strikes Twice. That wasn't uh, the Flash. I don't remember what it was though. So you guys ready to move on? Let's talk about yes. Titans Episode 3, Ghost, uh, which focuses on the big fight between Dr. Light and uh, how do you feel about it? I can't stand um, it. <laughs> Wait, what I'm did you say? Kidding. I'm just kidding. It was the best episode out of all the Titans episodes. 
Whoa. I don't know if I agree with that. I don't Maybe out agree. of this season. Yes, yes. This sure. season. I still think the one with Doom Patrol is still the it's still like the By far. For me, Hawk and Dove. The Hank and Dawn far- episode. As far as really? action, though, I mean, there were some great, there were some great action scenes in the first season, especially like episode two and stuff like that. But I don't know, I just really love this episode. Okay, can we talk about since we're talking about action scenes? Can we talk about every single fight training uh, choreography that happens? Like, there's yeah, the one it's... where Jason Todd is taking on the entire, is taking on both Raven and uh, Beast Boy, Gar. And they're, like, fighting each other. Like, it's a three-way fight. And they're all mm-hmm. blindfolded. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is intense. And it was really fun to watch. And then you had uh, Rose and uh, Dick fighting it off. Yeah, and that was, it was like really two- good. It was like a two-on-one fight. But it was awesome, though. And, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, when Raven got her used her powers, that looked amazing. Yeah, it's such a step up in terms of, like, graphic quality from the first one. Yeah. Like, I really like mm-hmm. this new look at Raven, and it's interesting, because they're talking about, like, there's something inside her. I think that's her astral form. Oh. Yeah, and she's, like, scared to use it, because she doesn't know what it is, right? And if she falls asleep, her astral form will come out. But she thinks it's, like, this demon yeah, inside that... of her. Because in season one, there kind of was a demon inside of her. Mm-hmm. Which was Trigon in a sense, right? It was like Trigon trying to break three and trying yes. to corrupt Raven enough to escape, right? Whereas now yeah. Trigon's gone and what's left is like, isn't Trigon's influence, but it's the some of the powers of Trigon, if I had to guess, because of the gem. That could make sense because last season her eyes would go black, but this time they went red. Yeah. It looked awesome. It looks like he's slowly corrupting her and and I think that's the reason why she's not talking to anyone and trying to think that she doesn't want to talk to uh, to uh, Dick Grayson um, because he's like, I can't talk to him because he's already burdened with not just Deathstroke, but also Dr. Light, who I- I'm going to say, while his powers and everything else look fine, I- I'm not in love with the suit. It looks too... Oh. Mm, I don't know. It just feels like... Okay, I want. I know it's grit. It, it's a nice grit suit, but I'm like, I wouldn't mind if they actually went with the black suit with the white stuff there. You know, it just it seems it was like okay, junkyard look. It it does look <laughs> functional, that you know it actually connects to his powers and such. But this, it just feels. I don't know. I, I'm not in love with the suit, but meanwhile, everything else of the of the show though, I really do like. One thing I do like is how they're using um, uh, Gar as, you know, expanding him not just to be Beast Boy, but also having him, you know, at the computer and having him, you know, help. Re- Re- Replace yeah. Cyborg as the tech guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think it's a nice little wrinkle in trying to expand his um, character. I like it, and I and I wish there was a little more interaction with him and, um, uh, and Raven. I think those two have great chemistry with each other, and I wish they go in more, go more <laughs> into it. But um, Jason, though, I gotta say, the actor playing Jason Todd is doing a hell of a job. He's doing uh-huh. probably yeah. one of the best. I think. I think this is the only, first time we've seen an adaptation in live action of like having Jason Todd pre, you know, what happens to him when he poor becomes Red Hood. This, yeah. I think this is something I, um, you know, I like the fact that he does seem, you know, more trying to be more trying to prove himself and such. And it looks like he, he does that. And I like that. I, I like that. And even though it bites him in the butt in the end, but it's something that I really do think he's, um, it's one of the best parts of, of the show is how he does it, you know? Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Um, I dig, I dig the suit. <laughs> um, and one thing I want to touch on that you guys were discussing about, like uh, how you, you, you theorized that uh, Trigon's a part of like Raven. That's actually, I, I feel like something from like, well, it's it's from the comics. I don't know if that's exactly what they're doing, but so in the later runs of like the first part of um, the eighties, like Raven's like she like her 
like she literally starts to like morph and look like a demon like her face and like she's like she's constantly like in her room and hiding her face because like trigon's becoming more a part of her and uh I feel like they switched out, like, you know, the relationship between Wally West and her with Beast Boy and how he's trying to reach to her and everything. Yeah. And uh, I think that, yeah, I think that was a good twist on that story. I'm really liking this new direction. I will say I was disappointed with Dr. Light after such a fantastic first introduction with, like, the mm -hmm. suicide bomb people. The fight scenes just felt very lackluster with Dr. Fight, with Dr. Light. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what you can do with him. I think it's more budget constrained, and 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 I think that's probably what's going to be the big issues of Titans this season, since it's going to be more superhero focused than say Swamp Thing or Doom Patrol. Um, that's because Doom Patrol again, they rarely had any type of super action type of stuff. It was more comedy, more dramatic stuff, more. Uh, emotional building towards people, uh, towards the uh, the characters. I want that with Titans, but you know the fight choreography does good. But with characters with Doctor Light and such, I worry because he's more of a projectile um, uh, villain, and they can't. You know, I yeah, I feel like if they had the money and more money to the budget, I think the fight scenes would be a bit better. But like I said, you know, the last couple scenes of the episode, the way they had, um, you know. Don't mind me jumping ahead a bit, but when they look, uh, when uh, you know, Slade came down, I'm like, yes, this looks like to be, you know, that looked like okay. They really, I I'm hoping when they put him in action, I hope, I hope that means it's going to be um, more uh, a lot better fight scenes. Yeah, just going back to the training sequences, I really liked the little moment when Rose cuts Nightwing's staff and he's left with two sticks, like his Eskrima sticks or Eskrima. I don't yes. know. Yes, yes, yes. So I That's love that good. hint. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. That's what they're referencing, right? Yeah, we all get it. And we're all like, give it to us. <laughs> so can we talk you about guys, the leak? You guys all saw that leak. Yeah, I was going to say you guys saw that leak footage, leaks, right? Or do we not want to? Um, maybe Would at the way? end. Okay. Maybe at the end of the recap. The end? Okay, yeah. Okay. But so, um, um, what, I will yeah. say, um, so regarding everyone, the fight sequence... Yeah. Just everyone, oh, yeah, real sorry. quick, if you don't know what we're talking about, uh, there were some leaks about Titans, uh, some photos from the set. <laughs> and we don't want to spoil it, because for some of you, it's going to be a moment that you'll want to see in person. For some of you, you just want to know right away. So we're going to talk about right at the end uh, of, of the of the this episode of the podcast. Uh, so let's continue. Yeah. So as far as the Doctor Light fight, why did they all go unarmed? They know who he is. They know how dangerous he is supposedly. So why are they all in their like civilian clothes? Donna should have her bracers at least. She could have taken him by yeah. herself. Yeah, I, I totally don't agree. Know why? I really don't know why they didn't wear their suits. Maybe, you know, I think in the first season, um, Donna has said, oh, I still have my suit. I still have my stuff. I mean, I don't know why she couldn't wear it. I'm surprised they <laughs> went, I'm surprised they went um, to take on Donna without any armor or anything else. Oh, my God. That's so true. I thought about yeah. that. What? Yeah. yeah, I did, too. What happened? And one thing I thought, like, I couldn't help but think while they were watching it, like, you guys uh, touched base on just a minute ago about how Duke was saying, like, how do you really combat with his, you know, photon or light abilities? And, like, during that whole fight scene in, like, uh, what was it, the football field or something, I was just like, man, you could really use Cyborg right now with that white noise cannon. Just, like, <laughs> booyah. <laughs> I love Cyborg on Doom Patrol. I'm so happy with him there. Oh, I, I yes. love him on Doom Patrol as well. I, just, I couldn't help but think. I was like, you could really use a Cyborg right about now. <laughs> so, but here's the question. Would you rather have Cyborg on Titans or Doom Patrol? Doom Patrol. Yeah, Doom Patrol. It helped him out immensely. I think that uh, opened up more for him in Doom Patrol. Uh, hopefully one day they do get him and maybe as a trade-off, they'll trade, you know, like, you know, they'll get like Beast Boy and then with Titans, they'll take, I don't know, um, Superboy or something when he'll mm -hmm. come in. They'll say, okay, he's going to be the one in Doom Patrol season three or two or whatever. Right. Yeah, I would love that. But here's the problem. There's just something to be conscious of. Doom Patrol ends in the year 2021. Season 1 does. 
Titans is in 2000. Really? Yeah, it does. The finale does like a two year oh, time wow, jump. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's like a one or two year time jump. But the fin- but the Titans is in 2019. So I don't remember that time jump. Well, I wonder. Oh my gosh. I wonder if they can use that gap though, that time period, and be like, you know, throw him in the Titans. I mean, I like him on the Doom Patrol, and honestly, I, I am fine if he just stays there. But I wonder if like that that two year gap it, during some point he he's with the Titans at that point. But then again, we don't even know if yeah, that's even maybe. in the same universe. Well, okay. Well, oh my god, I'm not even gonna get into the continuity in that because it's so confusing. But here, here's <laughs> what we do know about uh, this is how the jump, the time jump happened. If you remember, the the chief's big secret is revealed, and then everyone leaves. And then they're getting pissed off by this conscious, like, this music that keeps playing over and over again in their heads. And, like, two years later, they all, like, recongregate together and land on Danny the Street. That's sort of how it goes, at least. But, yeah, yeah. that was a weird season finale. Like, everyone loved it. But I think I in retrospect... Like I think like, six months. I think it was, I think it was, like, two years. Wow. I, I know. must have blanked because I remembered like something totally different. Well, it's also confusing because they like did a two year time jump or they did some sort of time jump in a dream sequence. And then they jump back to the present and then they did a time jump in the real present. Right. And so I don't remember what's <laughs> what and what's not, which is very problematic. I'm more confused now than I, I was to that episode. <laughs> But, uh, but I would I really like to see Rita to and I know I would love <laughs> to yeah, see Rita and a, um Gar's that's like relationship. one of those like super confusing. I'd love to see Rita and who New Fifty Two. Oh, and Gar's relationship because you know how she's like his stepmom in some oh, yeah, versions. That, that would be cool if they could tie that in for sure. Yeah. Y'all thinking about um uh, Ravenger? You know Rose. Yeah. I dug it and uh I I'm real curious how if it's going to be her, you know, betray, you know, being like a double agent kind of situation or if she's yeah, actually running, they, running from her dad. Yeah, cuz they did get Deathstroke on the footage and I'm like, did he do that on purpose cuz he could hide from a camera if he wanted to. Yeah, I mean, it's, totally it's all again, it could be just one you know, maybe just me, but you know, when Rose opened her like damaged eye, maybe there's a camera in there or something, that sort of thing. Oh, that would be, yeah, that would be next level on her part. Well, you oh. never know. I did really like the two episode arc that sort of just happened, right? With the first episode being Dr. Light and the second episode being the conclusion. So you introduce the character and then you conclude it. And I thought that worked really well. Because, like, it, then it got to end on a cliffhanger, and it felt almost com- like it felt like a comic in the sense that, like, they always end on some sort of cliffhanger. Yeah, like, I really did feel like this uh, entire third episode was like a comic in a way. Like, I, I just, I really love this episode. I was just disappointed with the light fight, and we were talking about, like, what they could have done. I think he should have, like, messed with their vision. And, like, they all got blinded, and then they could do, like, the callback to the blindfolds fighting. Oh, oh that would have been great. Yeah. That would have been fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, and you could do, like, some, like, disorienting camera effects or whatever. So, like, like you know, like they do in, like, the flash grenade sort of approach. Yeah, or, like, a J.J. Abram, like, just too much flair. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel like that would have been so much fun. I thought it was so funny when Donna dropped that bike on him. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, and it showed a little bit of the team of the well, the teamwork they used to have. I, yeah. Again, I do. I still wonder why they didn't put a suit on or anything else to really uh, get back into it. Maybe Hank's not going back because he's, you know, trying to get over it. Um, you know, he's trying to move on, but that's something you know that's in him and such. So. You know, that sort of thing. So you don't know. I'm not certain Hank has a suit with him. Mm, um, well, they probably have a spare. There's always yeah. A- yeah. <laughs> True. Okay. Uh, uh, one and one is gone. Do you guys want to move on to some news?
I'm trying to remember if there's anything else that I want to talk about in the episode. I don't know. But I think that's, yeah, I think this episode was really good, but nothing very, yeah. like, that we, you know, just that ending scene with Destro. Oh, my gosh. I just can't wait for more of him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mentioning Starfire's sister was pretty cool, you know. Right. Oh, yeah. Blackfire. Blackfire. Her whole storyline, we didn't touch on it at all. Oh, yeah. yeah. It wasn't that great. I think that was the problem. <laughs> I did like her interaction with, um, I forget his name, but I really did like their whole like Talid? history. It was starts with a T. I think it was like Talid. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that guy at all. The whole time watching that scene, though, while they're in the car ride, I couldn't help but think about that Young Justice episode with like Roy yeah. or, uh, you know, clone, clone Roy or whatever, Will Roy. And Artemis, and you're just, like just watching, and be like, oh, she's supposed to be with someone else. And uh, I was like, please don't go that route. <laughs> See, I kept watching it like, oh, please, I can't wait. <laughs> I liked their dynamic. I really liked their chemistry. I thought they worked really well. Yeah. Will forever oh. side on different times. <laughs> Especially when he's like trying to impress her, and he breaks the window to get that like oh, little necklace. Yeah. That was so funny. <laughs> And then he pulls out the money when she's like, how'd you even pay for this? I got this out of your bag. Like, I thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah, I do like that um, uh, Starfire. Again, um, I do love the um, the attention um, that they're giving Starfire. I like the episode finally giving uh, her something to do. Mm -hmm. and, and it looks like they might have some more people coming down from her, uh, coming down in the mid part of the season. My worry is that it might get too much. Um, you know, that's my fear is that it gets too much, you know? Yeah. Because right now they're balancing them really well. Yeah. I don't know if they it are, starts though. balancing, uh, like everything looks fine. Then you get the alien stuff. You have Destro Ku. I have to say, um, I, I am like, wow. Um, I got to say, the, the dude who plays uh, Destro, uh, the, um, uh, I I just um, I'm I'm you know this guy is great. Yeah, well, yeah. this guy is um, he was great in Ozark, that Netflix Jason Bateman show. Oh yeah, he was yeah. great too. I don't uh, know. I think my problem with split stories is that one, like if you're gonna split your stories up into multiple different storylines, and you're like you need to make sure that they stay relatively contained to themselves. And then they tie back into each other towards the end of, like, or in the middle of a season. Because what I think happens is I feel like they aren't balancing the characters. Because mm. it feels like they're, because they're not being able to focus on everyone's storyline. And, and because they're all being connected into one story with, like, 12 different characters to focus on. Whereas I was trying to figure out, why is Game of Thrones do such a good job balancing 2 billion characters? But then, like, Titan seems to me to be struggling a little bit with, like, 12. Or like seven or whatever, however many we're at. And I think part of it is Titans like splits it up or you know, Game of Thrones splits it up. So like characters won't interact for a whole season, right? In Game of Thrones. Whereas in like Titans, they, they're all, they interact within the same episode, right? Like everyone's basically come back to the Titans Tower at this point. But that's yeah. what I'm liking about this season. That's what I didn't like about last season, where you'd go episodes without Starfire, Gar, or Hawk and Dove, and you'd be like, okay. And then they'd show up like 10 episodes later, and you're like, okay. Yeah, that was a really big flaw. And so I'm, like... I'm liking it this season that it's like, we get a little bit of each one of them. And I, I don't really care for the whole like separate storylines the whole season. And then at the end, they converge because then it, leave someone always on the outside and that person never gets to like build that rapport. So I like that she's going to come back to the tower. That's fair. So this is crazy. I'm, yeah. I actually side with new 52 on this. Ooh. <laughs> That's true. Do you always it's side true. with me or something? <laughs> no. Oh, no, I normally agree with most y'all just now. I was just picking fun because we, we differ on so many comic topics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm over here saying I love Starfire with that guy that's trying to take her back home. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, no, she needs to be a dick. Well, you guys want to talk about some news? Yeah. Oh, sure. Okay. So House of Whispers uh, surprised everyone when it arrived on DC Universe. 
Uh, House of Whispers is one of the Sandman universe titles that just came out, or that just came out a year ago on as part of Vertigo. Of course, what's shocking everyone is Vertigo isn't available on DC Universe. So everyone was going, like, tilting their heads out of curiosity. Here's the problem, though. We all found out, we all talked about it, and then they removed it when they, when we mentioned it to them and asked if, like, more, if more would be coming. Oh, no. Yeah, they removed it. And I read it as one of my many series I read yesterday, this, this week. It was so good. Like, I loved it. I was going to read it on Monday. <laughs> that was my favorite comic of the week. But now I can't include it. <laughs> oh. The Red Hood Outlaws one. Nathan. Was, oh, well. Yeah. They'll probably Nathan. bring it back. I think they No, will. they won't. They won't. No. It was completely accidental. If you look it up, here's what's funny, though. If you look it up and you type in House of Whispers, they shall show the series in, like, the search menu. But when you click on it, it says not available. No page not found. Oh, yeah. oh bummer. Yeah, that's that's a kick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just sad, because we, like, made such a big deal of it, and I asked Applejack, I was like, is this true? Is this true? Like, are we getting more titles? And she said, let's keep it a secret, and uh, let's just make it, keep it a whisper amongst ourselves. And then an hour later, it's gone. See, I like thought I it was... Say, I think it's going to be, the, trust me, the house, trust me, give it a year or two, when people just slowly forget about it, bam, that's what it's going to be. That's <laughs> yeah. what I always think of, you know? They're going to wait till like, no one cares anymore, and then they'll just randomly appear. See, or some more checked... maybe Sandman features, you know? Who, who yeah. knows? I thought they brought it on because um, it's an ongoing title, right? And well, yeah. Vertigo's so dead, is... so now it's DC. But so mm. is but so is the Dreaming Lucifer and Books of Magic, which are part so of the So I thought they were going to slowly bring them all in. Dreaming, Dreaming had already started the year process. It uh, started two weeks ago at the year mark. And then Sandman Universe was four weeks ago. And so now it's The Dreaming. And then now we're getting House of Whispers first title. And then they had Lucifer and Books of Magic next month. Mm. But they're not coming, it does. It seems. Which I'm disappointed by, but it was so good. I mean, I like... I'm so heartbroken when I saw it was gone. And I feel, like, responsible because I asked the Applejack about it, and then it disappeared. <laughs> so, look, you guys can all blame me. <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's fine. Like I said, they're going to come back later. So, always think positive, man. <laughs> and always. I'm gonna go yeah, barely anything here. goes away forever in DC. Hmm. I'm going to go check real quick if it's on Comic-Con. Nothing ever <laughs> I'm just checking real quick if it's on Comixology Unlimited, just so you know. You guys uh, doing any Batman events tomorrow? Well, uh, this is Batman's 80th. Um, After I do some stuff, I might do a live stream of uh, maybe Arkham Origins or maybe uh, Batman Arkham Asylum, you know, to get back to uh, that stuff, you know, if if I get the time to. Okay, I got it. Okay, I got it. House of Whispers number one and two are available on Comixology Unlimited. So there you go. If you want to read it, get Comixology Unlimited. I've actually never read any of the House of Whispers. I don't even know what it's about. <laughs> um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Over here. Okay, did you hear what I said about com- uh, Comixology Unlimited? Yeah. Yep. I can't tell. Okay, my microphone's going in and out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, but yeah, one and two are on Comixology Unlimited. So if you want it there, you can read it there. Um, next up on the news, uh, Applejack wrote create some sample pictures for Community 2.0. Uh, not sample pictures, they're photos from Community 2.0. It's just like two of them, but I was curious to see what you, your thoughts were on them. It's interesting. I'm interested in learning more about it. I like that you can now see the stuff from like latest, unread, or like top. So like yeah. you can order the discussions based off of the top co- the top comments or likes. I don't I don't know how it's going to work, but then you can also order them based off of what you haven't read yet, and then also just the latest how it is currently. 
or the most popular or those sorts of things yeah yeah i will say it looks super sleek like does anyone feel that it still has the color from like the old community <laughs> so that's probably like an older screenshot but yeah i like it it has like some green added to it i know i think the website needs more color it's so like uniform yeah it, it is i like but it's funny because I, I didn't think about that and in retrospect it very much feels that way but it's nice because they add some green and then they added like some little like symbols and stuff to like 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 they have a for the edit they have the wrench but it's like those little additions look so nice it just looks very polished uh if you don't know yeah. where to check this out uh go to open community discussion on the watchtower and scroll through that and there should be a couple more screenshots um anything else you guys want to say was there anything that you learned about that from that discussion about community 2.0 that you want to talk about um well i don't know how to explain that because i know a little i know way too much about community 2.0 so i don't know what i can say and um, i should have if i had had time i would have like gone and taken quotes and stuff from that so i could talk about them but I'm going to refrain from commenting in case this is something I shouldn't. <laughs> uh, they sent me one of those emails for like the beta testers, and oh, yeah. I'm feeling like this. I feel I'm feeling like they set the bar really low for me because <laughs> I'm not a tech savvy person or anything like that. Like I pretty much just goof around on the threads. Well, maybe that's why they need you to make sure even someone like you can <laughs> can access all their features. What is, is Aquaman? You're Are you a community hero? You're fading in and out, Nathan. No. Oh, come <laughs> on. Are you a community yes. hero? Playing games with me. <laughs> it's not going well. Hello? Uh, he said yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. So that's why. That's why. There you go. There, it's for all community heroes to beta test. Oh, okay. Yes, um, I am a community up. hero yep. now. But they haven't sent out they haven't sent us the stuff yet, so we're all still waiting oh, to cool. check it out. Yeah. It's okay. It should be fantastic. I'm really looking forward to beta testing it. Yeah, it uh, looks actually really interesting. And something I hope that it's um um you know, something that you know um you know really wanted to see in the first part. But hey, they got to it. My hope is it's going to connect more people to DC Universe and more, um, you know, connect with more fans and such and a way to, you mm -hmm. know, make things a lot more interesting. So then mm -hmm. all our book clubs can have more people. Yeah. That's actually, that's, that's great. That's the only reason we need Community 2.0 is so those book clubs can get more people. <laughs> <laughs> no. That's a joke. I feel so uh, bad. I have not partaked in my own book club for the last two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> it's no, like mine's a community yeah. like we like rotated between me bat jamanga and jk but I, <laughs> i've been absent for two weeks i feel horrible well i'll say this me book, book clubs are hard and i found the only way you can like keep up with them is like figuring out like the reading schedule you already do and trying to find something that works with that reading schedule right so for example new 52 you read a lot of wonder woman anyway right so it's kind of so you making a one and leading a Wonder Woman book club is just an excuse to read the comics you want, right? Yeah, it's just something that's like, okay, read it. Because otherwise I would just leave it in my to read list. Exactly. And like, I'm bringing back, uh, I'm going to be bringing back new to DCU book club next week. But all it is, is literally just reading like the brand new titles out that week. So that's going to be able so like, I read like 20 billion things. Four of those and of my choice will be on the book club. And I try to keep it to you guys will follow the same series. Uh, rather than like jumping around all over the place, just so that's mm -hmm. accessible for you guys. But see, for me, that's what I already read, right? The problem is, and this is the hard part, and this is why I, I, I have a lot of people. And on top of that, like I'm really bad at posting the questions, but I have to read them first. And I get through all of them, but I don't get through them all fast enough necessarily. Um, see, I, don't, yeah. I don't read them first. I still do the questions before <laughs> reading them. Really? It's so funny. Mm -hmm. I like making yeah, sure. Yeah. I remember JL 
um, Justice League Wonder Woman Superman said um, <laughs> that she she's like reading them months in advance. I'm like, oh, no, 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 I can't do that. I know, right? She's like, she was telling me we had to uh, check out the interview last week we had with them, Matt and JL. They were fantastic. <laughs> really good. Had, really good. This yeah, she's. <laughs> and I love that. They have like this list where they put all the like bad female comics with too many butt pics. <laughs> Speaking of, butt, I, I wanted. To... Speaking of butt. Oh pick, right, yeah, the Nightwing. Do we want to talk about it or just pretend it didn't happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was, I when am... I look at the pictures of the uh, live action t- uh, Titans, um, I'm like, I was disappointed that uh, poor uh, Brendan White, man. He does. I was like, man, he doesn't have the ass for that night day. The comp to say <laughs> wow. he does though. He's got those thighs. Just, as far as the Nicholas Scott, like I love her. I love her like uh, one thousand for action and detective. And I just can't believe people are going to get moody over the booty. Like it just seems. I don't think they're moody. I don't think they're moody. I think they're loving. I think it's a celebration. I think they want a zoomed in shot. That's just the butt. <laughs> I was like, "Yep, I knew that was." I saw that yeah. trending. I was like, "Yeah, that's that's that that." I knew that was gonna happen when I first saw it. I was like, "Yep, of course." Not no one cares about Superman or Batman. It's like, "Oh, oh <laughs> Nightwing, there it is." I'm like, "You know, I mean, like, I mean, you know, a lot of fanboys and fangirls love that stuff." Which hey, he, yeah, he won the. She Meta really Meta just Meta. captured it. She <laughs> captured it too. It's just like front exactly. and center, man. And it's like he's got the shiny costume, like you know, the glare going on and everything. <laughs> it is hilarious. Well, she is the one that made she that is. popular image. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, oh, absolutely. Like I love her art. She's like, I mean, yeah, she's awesome. I uh, love those. But covers. yeah, no, I just yeah. I just wonder how people would react though if she had done that. Like, oh, I wish we could have gotten that for like oh, the Wonder Woman one. That would have been nice. But we have that, like, in every Wonder Woman issue. Oh, yeah. True. Some people might not even like, you know, you know, I think, honestly, some comic fans probably prefer the Nightwing uh, ass than the ass, so. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Man, oh, shucks. Moments like this make you wonder why you're a DC fan and, like, make you realize that, like, it's like, of course you're a DC fan. But I, don't, I don't know where I'm going with yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. What, so, what does Marvel yeah. have, man? They got that Captain America, America's ass. No, see, that's why. Yeah, that's, you know, that's why that's no one. Really <laughs> well, in the um, MCU, yeah, because wonder... he yeah. keeps like getting like Dark, these that's uh, why promotional Nightwing... things with his butt, like a butt pick. And it's, <laughs> when I Nightwing showed up, I didn't Captain America saying, "You know what? I'm out." <laughs> there it is. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's funny because like DC's like universe is wholehearted. It. They even tweeted out a peach emoji. <laughs> okay. So even had the article based off of like the whole history of it. I know it was so funny. And then Hub City wrote it. Uh, we should have him on the show sometime. But uh, he mm. wrote, but he wrote it, and he called it the history of uh, Nightwing Rear One. <laughs> Boom! That was so good. That was such a good pun. And he found like this. Well, he had a couple. Moment. Yeah. Okay, go that ahead. is so good. That should be on a T-shirt. Well, no, it shouldn't. His article, but... his article. He had a couple of really good, like, uh, butt puns in there. Um, it was, oh it was God. a pleasure to read that. <laughs> you guys, he was so good, and I felt so bad. Someone was like trashing the article so bad. I was like, what? It's like one All of the best on articles I've read in so long. Oh <laughs> uh, no, it was on the DCU community. It was like I posted a. Was it? Was okay, like, it was. Yeah. Yeah, and I was like, why? Why? He's so good. Anyway, moving on. I don't want to feel like talking about this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have a, oh, wait. No, uh, okay. I have a listener question. So let's go. I'm just going to read through this. I wanted to talk about it more in depth, but we don't have a lot of time. Uh, uh, so the last news thing of the day is six Batman games are available, available for free on the Epic Game Store. Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight. Lego Batman, Lego Batman 2, DC Superheroes, and Lego Batman 3, Beyond Gotham. And this is really exciting for anyone who uh, under knows, doesn't know what Epic Games says, is every week they have a free video game, sometimes two games. Actually, recently it's been two. And if they do two games, one of them's always rated M, and one of them's below rated M. Um, and the, they're celebrating Batman's 80th with six free Batman games. 
So all you have to do is if you have a PC, download the Epic Games Store launcher, and then you just go to the store and you just purchase and you just press get, and then you'll have them all. And uh, fantastic, I love it. I mean, do you have any quick thoughts to say about the game? I haven't played any of those myself. Well, I've played Asylum, City, and Night. Fun um, stuff. I think Night tails off a bit. But Arkham City and Asylum to me... No, Arkham City is kind of great, but to me, Arkham City to me is the peak greatness of not only Batman games, but also superhero games. So do you recommend playing Arkham City, or do you recommend playing Arkham Asylum first? Or can you just jump straight into Arkham City? Actually, I think you can jump into Arkham City. Sure, you, there's some stuff you can learn from. You know, it, it does enhance the experience a bit, but it's uh, the way that you know the controls, the uh, uh, the story, and everything else. Uh, it does fill you in. It doesn't make you feel <clears throat> it doesn't make you feel like oh well. You need to play the entire previous game, which wasn't bad. But it's a little bit archaic, but when you play Arkham City, the movement and everything else, it just feels like yeah. it's hard to go back to it. <laughs> uh, Duke, so, like, I was just, before the podcast, I was saying, like, I, I just finished playing uh, Return to Arkham City. Now, is that, like, a totally different story, or just the, them relaunching that game on the PS4? Like, was the other one on the PS3? Oh, yeah, that was that was the um, Return to Arkham. It was just a collector's uh, thing. That was it. Okay, so then, well, yeah, I have played that one, and um, I hadn't played, I haven't played Asylum yet, even though I have it. Um, and I got to say, I didn't have a problem just jumping right in. But I mean, I also know, you know, Batman stories and stuff. I don't know if that helped or not, but uh, I really enjoyed it. And you really, man, you feel like Batman. Like, yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> and they're also giving away the Lego Batman games, which for people like me that aren't too good at video games, those games <laughs> are really good and fun. I wonder if you can play them online, because I would totally love to play one of them with you. But I don't know, like, online, but I don't know if you can. That would be so fun, if we could, like, figure out how to, like, live stream it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, um, <laughs> I do have the, the tech to do it, but again, I have only my computer yeah. as well. It's not the back computer, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. What it is. I'm so, I'm too busy to, like, I don't know. I'm like too busy to also live stream. I barely, I barely wrote the podcast script, you guys, as is. Oh yeah, sorry, spoiler alert. We do have a podcast script. <laughs> um, so we need to move on. I would love to talk about this some more because I'm super curious and I have a bunch more questions. But we have a listener question. So for those of you who don't know, we have a section in the DC Universe fan creations where you can ask us a question of your choice, and we'll try to answer as many of them as we can. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time because we are actually, I think we're at the hour mark, but uh, but we're going to try to power through this question. And if we am, if we don't feel like it's satisfactory, we'll add more to it next week. Got it? So this comes from Cynical Pink. So, outing myself as a not-so-great fan, I've never read comics past the pre-52 run, was a big reader, then life happened, and I never catched up, so I've always stayed a, a, a big fan of the live-action and the animated series. Now that DCU exists and I have access to tons of back issues, I'm trying to slowly get current, but I'm reading things in order and have missed a lot. Anyway, because I'm super OCD about spoilers, yeah, I know a lot of stuff is old by now, but I generally avoid a lot of the community talk around here, and that sucks. So, which story arcs do you guys recommend for new slash out-of-touch readers who don't have a ton of knowledge about the current universe? And what are your favorite series out of its current titles? Like, what would you recommend to someone brand new to DC? Well, there are a lot of interesting stuff to really get into the series. You gotta know what type of, um, you know, um, still what type of hero you want to get into. There's, um, you know, again, there's a lot of stuff. Like, for example, if you want to look at the villains, there's like a, a Two Face Year One, or in fact, there's if you look at comic DC comics, they say where to start. Uh, reading Superman comics, there's uh, the Man of Steel. Um, that's um, the 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 uh, reboot of, uh, of Superman, a different take from the uh, you know Infinite Crisis, uh, All Star Superman. That's to me Wait, one of my can favorite. Can you clarify? Ones. Are you referring to the Bendis series or a different series? Yeah, I'm um, I'm I'm talking about the writer artist John Byrne series of 1986. Okay. 1980. Yeah, yeah. 
1987. Okay. The question, gonna, yeah. The question's asking more like about the current stories that are ongoing now, yeah. where they can jump on to know about the universe. Oh, so I'm wow. also gonna say real quick, don't read anything by Josh Bur Byrne. Uh, I know that like he's he's had a bunch of homophobic stuff and uh, is not and has yeah. said a bunch of super controversial stuff. And D his Doom Patrol 2004 is coming to DC Universe. And just know that if it is that there's a lot of controversy behind the person now. Although weirdly, Dan DiDio is really is trying to like tease that he's coming back to DC. And I don't know why, because no one's really asking for him to return. Uh, so, so going to uh, talking about the story arcs that so I jumped in with DC Rebirth, and this is this is how I got into DC Comics, and I read uh, DC Universe Year One or DC Universe Number One, Re Re DC Universe Rebirth Number One, and then I jumped in and I started just reading arcs one at a time. Now, I found, I've been thinking about this for a while, and I've read most of Rebirth, so I feel like I have a fairly good, most of Rebirth, like 7% of all Rebirth titles. And, well, I know, right? There's so many. But uh, one thing I found that helps, helped me a lot was, and one thing I've learned, is that starting at number ones is nice, but there's really what I would call two different phases of Rebirth. And I've explained this before, but something I came to a recent development, like I figured out like two months ago, and I've called it phase one and phase two. And phase one starts with DC Universe number one, and then it goes all the way through to Justice to Dark Knight's Metal. And that includes series like The Button, Superman Oz Effect, uh, uh, what are some other big ones? Uh, the whole Batman uh, War of Jokes and Riddles, and a, uh, the Aquaman run by Abnet, and a bunch of other really cool stuff, including Super Sons is phase one. Now there's also phase two, which just started on DCU really recently, starting with Justice League No Justice, uh, with number one through four, and then it goes into Justice League number one through seven. So if I were you, I would start with phase two titles, and every single title has a place to jump on, almost everyone. So recently, so for example, Batgirl just got rebooted. Uh, I was just saying earlier that... Uh, uh, Red Hood Outlaws just got re got somewhat rebooted. It got a new volume, starting over at volume one, but it's sticking with its numbering. So jump in on 26. Batgirl, I think it's 25. You can jump in. Uh, Nightwing, you can either jump in on 50, which is going to be a highly controversial issue. I'm just warning you now. Or you can jump in on 44, I think. But so all of the titles have a jump on point. New 52, you were talking about, like, you just, you jumped on with 51, right? Um, for Wonder Woman, I think I restarted that one at 51. I, I agree with you. They do come in like in like waves, these um, like new sets and whatever. But as far as my favorites for Rebirth, I'm going to have to say Green Arrow was one of my favorites. And Justice mm. League Dark is my favorite right now. Justice League Dark is coming out right yeah. now as part of Phase 2. And by Green and Arrow, Green Arrow, you're talking about, Green Arrow has ended now. But are you talking about... Uh, starting with number one, or starting with number yeah, 41? I would say number one. Okay. I've started it and haven't finished Green Arrow. It's my biggest problem. Uh, so I'm like, I'm on like issue 13 of Green Arrow. It's one of the few series I haven't finished yet. Um, yeah, if you like a long arc story, that's for you. Yeah. Because it does go, it does pretty much cover a long span of issues. But I would say, so I don't know if you know this, but I have a DC Universe Rebirth reading order where I break down every single Rebirth comic. Uh, it's a link. I'll bump it up in the comments for you or post the link on the uh, with the uh, answer questions. And uh, I have all sorts of breakdowns from favorite characters. I just finished a Zod reading order, and I wrote a Renee Montoya reading order for Hub City, which was a horrible reading order. No offense, Hub City, if you're listening. Uh, I enjoyed writing it. But it's impossible to write a reading order for that character because she like only makes guest appearances. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so it's like really hard to like actually write a reading order because nothing significant happens in the first phase. In the second phase, she gets to enjoy Event Leviathan and gets to sort of return as the question. But the first phase wasn't very good. So I would start. So there's two ways to approach this. I'm just going to be this because we're running out of time. I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh, but start with phase one. And just read through the highlights. Uh, just I'll, I'll, I have a list that's like a fast track. Just read through those like 
five series or whatever, and then jump in on phase two. And hopefully that gives you like those, that's a good enough starting point. And then when you catch up on phase two, then maybe try jumping back and trying to catch up some of the stuff from phase one. I'm yeah. Re I'm reworking on a new rebirth highlights reading order. Cause I had the original one that was designed to be like one a week. Cause I try to do a rebirth reading, like a rebirth book club. And I create like a 20 week order for that. And then it didn't work out. So <laughs> it's okay. Well, if all else fails, just read justice league, Superman and Batman. Cause that's going to yeah. affect the whole universe. But don't, mm, yeah. but don't read justice league phase one rebirth. Horrible Wait, series. Yeah. Do not read that. Horrible series. But you know, but here's something the worst interesting. worst Justice League series I've ever read. Sorry. <laughs> Amen, Nathan. Mm -hmm. But if you want Sad. something a little more odd, a little weird, check out the DC Heroes crossover in Looney Tunes. I think that will be, it's a really Ooh. interesting and funny take to of these heroes and how these uh, characters uh, work and um, barrel back with each other. You know, that's what, because if, you know, you know, the, I think that will be a great opening um, you know, great way to really get in some new readers because you do like Looney Tunes and, you know, don't really know about the DC Universe and such. I think that's a really be a great way to introduce people into DC Universe if you give them some of these comics and stuff. And they are family friendly too. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, um, right, real quick, I'll just say, I know we're out of time. But uh, Nathan pretty much nailed it on the head with, if you'd read the new 52 and stuff, like the first half of uh, Rebirth was really just them kind of retconning uh, what they had done with that. You could go with just reading like, you know, uh, the metal and everything and then just jump right into the second half of Rebirth. And like, like you were saying with like the, the new Justice League and uh, those, those kind of titles, I think that would be a good approach. And I think a good way to describe phase one and phase two, I'm just branding this right now, is phase one is the return of hope. It's the return of continuity. It's the return of old characters that have been forgotten in New 52. And then phase two is really about surviving and trying to maintain that hope and hardship. And phase two is a lot more darkness going on, but it also has a lot of wonder and like brand new like ideas. Whereas rebirth was sort of a return of the old ideas, phase two or phase one was a return of the old. Phase two is a bringing of new. What's What are new directions we can go? Uh, for example, Red Hood's going on by his own, which he hasn't done in a long time. And it's a new take on going on by his own. Uh, Justice League is the most important series of Rebirth Phase two, by far. Uh, and as New 52 was saying, everything gets affected by Justice League. For example, I'm not going to spoil too much, but they introduce like seven different forces into the world. We know a couple of them. We know six of them now. If you're up to, caught up to 32, but DC Universe only has seven. It includes the Slow Force. That's right, the Slow Force. <laughs> Actually, it's called the Still Force. It also includes the Ultraviolet Green Lantern Corps or the Ultraviolet Lantern Corps. So there's a bunch of whole new oh, ideas. Yeah, you talk. You, yeah, you talk about with yeah. Turtle Man uh, and the the first seven yeah, issues yeah. of the Justice League with Snyder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turtle just pretty much follow that all. <laughs> oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I just mean, follow Snyder's maybe. metal and then Snyder's other comics. <laughs> I think we should um, quickly just touch on the spoilers for Titans. Yep. So we're going into leaks. Wait, before we do, I'm just going to dismiss everyone so that uh, with the brief announcements, and then rather than say goodbye, we'll uh, we'll talk about spoilers. So next week we will talk about episode four comics. And hopefully more info about the community 2.0. Hopefully we get to use it and we can tell you a little bit about it. Uh, we are also rapidly approaching New York City, uh, New York Comic Con, and we are going to be celebrating it in a big way. I think we can announce how we're celebrating it next week. I think. I'm not certain, though. I'm sorry, you guys. have been so dodgy about this interview for forever. And expect more details <laughs> soon. You can also listen to us on Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Podbean. So we're going to talk about the spoilers. So everything after this is just a giant spoiler alert for the future of Titans based off a bunch of leaks. So if you don't want to hear them, leave now. Spoiler warning ending in three, two, one. Nightwing is here. Woo! <laughs> Yay! Okay, we got a leak. First we got, actually, it's so funny. We're talking about Nightwing butt pics. Uh, the first leak that we got was a butt pic of Nightwing's costume. And I don't I, know. I think it no. looked fine. 
Uh, it totally reminded me of that pose from the cover, though. Absolutely, Nathan. I was just like, oh, that's yes. almost like the, the art that we just saw. Like, it was kind of ironic. <laughs> it was ironic. Uh, I'm a little disappointed in it, the new costume. I'm going to be frank. Uh, I really mm -hmm. wanted them to go with more Spider-Man, like, type look. Like, it's like a skin-tight look, which is how the comics have always done it, with the exception of his, like, shoes. Nightwing is generally, like, his costume is generally more skin-tight and more, what, Spider-Man-esque. Not, not an acrobat. Like, yeah, like an acrobat. An acrobat, right. And they're going with the like heavy armor thing still. And I'm See, like I like it. I just think it needs more blue. Did oh. you guys notice the like on the front, his blue of the the hawks uh or the you know his bird symbol? It's like it, it's it's just like too much in the center. It's not like a, a clean V. It's like uh it's like squared off at the top. It looks weird. Oh, I didn't um, notice. I gotta look it up again. I'm gonna look it up. It might just be reading. the picture quality, but um, I, I could use like some blue soles or some blue on his gauntlets or something. Like some blue trim, like like the Flash has, like with his new costume, you know, with the yellow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't tell because also I can't uh, find a second Ravenger. Uh, you know, in the one picture, you can see just kind of like her, her arm and like part of her head. But there's another oh, yeah. picture where you can like pretty much see her from a distance. It's not a good picture, but um, yeah, yeah, the Ravager costume looks pretty comic book accurate as well. Yeah. I can't tell the front. I can only find the back. So I'm sorry. I can't, t I can't confirm or deny what <laughs> she was saying. Apparently that's the most important part anyways. <laughs> yeah. Thick Grayson. But so here's what I'm a little disappointed by. Okay. So obviously I want more skin tight. But also, is it does his legs have the blue or not? No, I don't think so. Because that disappoints me. Because I thought they would go off the rebirth costume because it's the best Nightwing costume yet, and it yeah, has like blue on the legs. Yeah, and I'm disappointed. Like I just want some blue on the legs. Like I'm perfectly fine with this look, but I really wanted some blue on the legs, you guys. And okay, can I be honest? The reason why I want this skin tight costume. It's because skin tight costumes are cheaper for people to buy closer, more accurate versions of. And I am I did Spider Man for Halloween last year, and I'm gonna I, the costume still fits me, but next year it's not gonna fit me because I'm still somehow growing. And uh, <laughs> and so I need I'm gonna need a new costume, and I really want it to be Nightwing. But if the, it's not skin tight, then uh, it'll be like four hundred bucks to buy instead of like a hundred <laughs> for like and a comic accurate one. And having it skin tight will probably you know be beneficial for the actor just mobility reasons because you know like hawk and dove like you know they're like man it's hard to move and that they had to have people like <laughs> hold their capes for them in between uh takes yeah but I, it's not it wouldn't look like it would fit in that world i don't think especially if they're trying to be realistic he would yeah, totally die some kind of kevlar armor but they have like a, a you know a kevlar mesh um you know that's like a fabric type which is pretty cool looking like in you know in the real world Yeah, I think I can't tell if I'm trying to find it still. And I think I've given oh up. Oh my gosh. Let me go ahead and look for it. I'm trying so hard to find the front picture. But I've seen it. Oh, wait, I found it. It's too hard to tell, though. See what I'm it's talking about? About the picture. center? Yeah, but it's a bad picture. Do you see so that? It's hard to tell. I know it's a bad picture, but you can just clearly see how it doesn't like go to like a V in the center. It's like it's cut off at the top, almost like it's. You, you, like it's yeah, part of the Superman. It's like shape. a U instead of a V. Yeah, it I think just looks. We need an official picture before we start judging, like the top of a symbol we can barely see. True. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you who haven't seen the photo, it's like a, it's like where the bird would normally go. It's like super blurry, so you can't actually see if it's in the shape of a bird or not. All you can see is like this, like blurred, just blob on the front of his like torso. But I would love so much for it to be... I want it to be the V instead of the bird. I'm just going to say it now. V instead of bird. Anyway, we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> We've been going on and on and on. Did I say we were going on? Yeah, I did. So, uh, do you guys want to wrap it up in any way in particular? Mm, well, I can't wait for... Uh, Titans episode four.
It looks interesting. So the front cover is Aqualad. So hopefully we get. Yeah, the titles I think is Aqualad. Is it not? They haven't confirmed it. I tried. Finding no, there was a leak on like. There was a YouTube video where this guy yeah. he he somehow he he had every episode listed, and I remember I want to I, I would almost bet money that the fourth one's called Aqualad. I wouldn't be surprised with this. Also, Titans did this thing where the even episodes are like new characters, and the odd episodes are 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 just continuations of wherever the story's going. And the first season did it too. And uh, for example, Donna Troy was episode eight. Doom Patrol was episode four. Uh, episode two was hawk and dove and so this is an episode four so as such they're going to introduce a new character so i guess it's aqualad uh so that is all the time we have today bye bye see ya bye